Welcome to a special Christmas edition of the Bon Ton Cooking Show. Today we're making a chicken sausage and gumbo because a lot of people have been requesting that. Now, I'm going to tell y'all what y'all need, starting with some sausage. Now, you can get some savoirs or richards or whatever you like, but I got this from the local meat store here in Appaloosa, so it's extra good. Now, I got some chicken, garlic, some green onions to put on top when that's done. I got some bell pepper. Of course, you're going to need some little rice. And I got some chicken. And right here, <laughs> I got some leg and thigh quarters right here just because that's what was on sale at the store. And I'm all about saving a little money. And it's going to be just as good as any chicken you want. And it's best to use chicken on the bone. But I know a lot of people like it boneless. But if you do that, just add a little bit of chicken base to this recipe to make up for the lack of bone flavor you get from this. Now, in addition to the chicken, we're going to need some roux. And see, I made my own roux for this. Because it's always best if you're going to make a stew or a gumbo with your own homemade roux, you make it the day before. And you do that so whenever it cools off, all the oil comes to the top and you can pour it off. Because nobody wants no oil or gumbo. That's not Cajun. And now for my seasoning, I personally have been using the Justin Wilson brand Cajun seasoning. Just because it has a lot of onion and garlic powder and y'all know I like that. Now, first thing we're going to do is cut all of our vegetables. Now that you got your vegetables cut, it's time to cut that sausage. So what we're going to do is take this chicken right here and we're going to clean that up. Move that like the chicken's running at the Mamou Mardi Gras. Just find that joint where it was moving at and get you a sharp knife. He laid that in half. And then from there, you're going to peel that skin off and you're going to trim off this fat right here. So what you're going to end up with is a skinless piece of meat right there. You got your bones, it's going to give you some flavor and no skin, so no grease. Other than from the sauces, but I'm going to show you all. And after you cut your chicken, you want to season that. And season that good, yeah. It's going to flavor the gumbo like everything else. Make sure you get both sides. Because you season just one side, the other side is going to be lonely. And we don't want that. Now that you got your chicken seasoned up real good, we're going to brown the vegetables and the sausage. But not the garlic yet, bro. You need some water in that before you put the garlic so that don't burn. Now, the first thing you want to do is turn your pot on high. Because we're about to brown them vegetables and the sausage together. Some people like to start their gumbo in a pot of boiling water, but this just adds a little bit of extra flavor to it. And you check to see if that's hot enough by touching your little piece of sausage in there, but don't burn your little fingers. You see how that's sizzling? And dump all that in there. And you don't want to waste none of that at all. You want all that in there. And you're going to stir it up. And then you're just going to wait until them onions get clear with them brown tips, just like I've been telling y'all. Don't get impatient now. Just wait. It's going to come. See, this might look like it's done right now, but it's not. See how it's starting to form these little grammies on the side of the pot a little bit? We're going to actually let that form a little bit more and start this like we're doing a sausage and a gravy. And that's going to add a whole nother element of flavor to this gumbo. So you stir it a little bit here and there, but you kind of want to let it stick just a little bit. That way we can scratch that gravy. You don't want to let it get black black. But you do want it to form a little bit of a grammy at the bottom of that pot. Comes up. Alright, so now as you can see, I'm going to let you get a good look at that. That's how it's supposed to look. And what you're going to do from there is you're going to add water from your little tiger's cup. And that's going to be your base. Look at that turn brown, brown. Then that's not from a black iron pot. That's a Magnolite doing that. And you want to scratch all them grammies up real good. And it's going to form a little gravy. Now you know if you start out your gumbo like this, that is definitely going to be good. Look at that. You can almost just serve this over rice. But we ain't about to do that. 
We're about to add a little bit more water. Come so. And we're gonna stir some roux in that. But first, before you add your roux, what we're gonna do, since we got some juice in there now, is pile all that garlic up in there and mix that. Just get some of that good, good garlic flavor. Man, I wish y'all could smell this. Just this smells phenomenal. And see this roux I have right here is some homemade roux. But the way I'm doing this is you can use the amount of jar roux that I use this roux and it's the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is have this big old heaping tablespoon. I guess you can call that a half a cup of roux. I'm gonna mix that into that sausage gravy I already started. And for this size pot that I got right here, that actually might not be enough, so I'm gonna put a little bit more, about half of that. Half of what I put the first time. So it's about three fourths of a cup. But make sure when y'all do this, since there's not a whole lot of water in there, you wanna stir that real good. Because if you don't stir it good enough, what's gonna happen is that roux is gonna burn to the bottom and it's gonna make your gumbo taste all burnt. So now what you're gonna do is add a good little bit of water. Stir that up. Make sure your fire is still on high. And right at first when you do this, it's gonna look like it's a little thin. But it's gonna cook down. And it's gonna get thicker as it reduces. So once it comes to a ball, you're gonna start to realize it's foaming up a little bit. And that's all right. Of course, don't let it foam up to the sides of the pot because that's gonna make a big, big mess. And you might get in trouble, you. So what you gotta do, is just let that go and you stir it up a little bit here and there make sure nothing sticks at this point and what's gonna happen is it's gonna get tick tick and you're gonna cook that down till it gets tick tick then you add a little bit of water to it and you do that like two three times ain't nobody gonna make no gumbo in like an hour over here it takes a while if you really want it to be good and right here you don't want to add no seasoning yet you're gonna get a lot of seasoning from your chicken so I'm going to show you all that later on. So right here, you're just taking your time. You let that ball down. In fact, you can turn this down right now to about a medium. A little bit over medium. And now's a good time to go crack you open a Budweiser. You can go watch the Saints game. Do whatever you want to do. Just try to distract yourself from this just a little bit because it's going to smell so good it's going to make you hungry hungry but don't rush that no it's going to be good if you wait don't forget while that's cooking to come and make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom and now that we let that sit there for a while as you can see it got tick 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 ball almost like a little stew so right there what we're going to do is add a little bit more water so like I said, we're going to cook that down a couple times. And the reason we do that is because you don't want it to have like that bitter flavor that you get from a roux if you don't cook it all the way. So we're going to maximize the amount of flavor by cooking it down one more time and then another time after that. So you reduce and add water three times before you ever add your chicken. So this is the third time we've let this gumbo cook down. And look how thick that is. So what we're gonna do right here is add another tiger's cup of water. Stir that up in there. And see how it thinned it out real nice. What we're gonna do from here is add our chicken. And we got our chicken seasoned up real, real good. Look how it got that coat of seasoning on that. And you just wanna lay that into the pot. Kinda separate them a little bit. And when you do this, you don't want to stir it too much right at first because we're going to try to let that seasoning stick to the chicken in the gumbo. So you can add you some boneless chicken at this point, but make sure you season it real good just like I did this and cut it up. But I prefer the bones because it adds more flavor. But you can make up for that with the boneless if you put some chicken base in there, like the better than bouillon. It's in a little jar. Now we cook that long enough to where the chicken's starting to get real tender and it's obvious that it's cooked. 
as you can separate it from the bone a little bit on the meat but we're not done yet what I'm trying to say is now it's time to taste the gumbo so you taste it to make sure it tastes the way you want it to and if you feel like it needs a little bit more seasoning you touch a little bit in there this time I'm going with the habanero Justin Wilson because it's a little bit spicier and I like my food spicy so I'm gonna add a little bit of that and I'm gonna mix it and you taste it again after you add your little seasoning if you have to and make sure it's right but what I'm showing you right here is look how thick that is it's almost a little too thick well that's actually how I like my gumbo but what we're gonna do is add a little bit of water and reduce it again because the more times you reduce it the better that's gonna taste yeah so you add your water and you mix it and you let it cook down again all right since we added that water last time it's cooked down again and it's got tick tick one last time so what we're gonna do is add some more water because like I said, the more times it reduces and you add water, the better your flavor is going to be. And what I want y'all to notice is, look how the chicken is starting to fall off the bone a little bit. That is exactly what you want. You want that to be real, real tender. And at this point, what I want y'all to do is turn your fire to a medium to low heat. Because at this point, it's cooked. You're just letting those flavors just marry together. But while that's cooking, I'm going to tell y'all a little joke. So. Boudreaux bought Thibodeau a parrot for Christmas and he gave it to him and about a week later he called him to check on the parrot and see how it was doing. He said, Boudreaux, how is that parrot? Is this, this doing good? He said, man, yeah, that thing was delicious. I cooked me a good old sauce pecan with that. And he said, what do you mean? He said, you know how much money I paid for that parrot? It could speak two languages. He was like, man, well, he should have said something. So what you're gonna do right here when your gumbo is almost through cooking is chop your green onions. And chop them kind of thin, but nothing special. And it helps if you leave that rubber band on the end like that to help it hold together. You chop that till it gets about right there. And you save that for if your wife wants to grow that. So you want to put most of them green onions you chopped in there. But save a little bit of the dark green part to use to garnish your food. Just to make it a little pretty. Now, so you see that consistency like that where it's not real thin, but it's not real, real thick either? That's how you want a gumbo. That's how real Cajuns cook their gumbo. You don't want it looking like a pot of bayou water, but you also don't want it tick tick like a stew either. So this is about the perfect consistency right here. But just to maximize the flavor, what we're gonna do is let it reduce one more time and add a little bit of water to come back to that consistency we had now. So just hold on to your little last tea bar because whenever this is done, that's gonna be good. That even makes Santa's bells jingle. So the gumbo is almost finished, but this part is very important. Even if you clean your chicken, and especially if you're a cuyon, and you don't, you're gonna have a little bit of fat. So what you wanna do is drag your spoon real gentle like across the top of that and skim the fat off. That's one of my pet peeves, is when you go to somebody's house to eat a gumbo and they got a, a pound of grease, wanna clog your arteries at the top of that. But this is how you combat that. You just skim that off, put that in a coffee cup or whatever you got. Don't burn them little fingers. And really take your time when you're doing this too because I'm really serious. It's, it's not good to have all that fat on top. And keep in mind, this is with me taking all the skin and the fat that I can off of my chicken. So if you don't, I'm saying it'll be like an inch of fat on top. And that's the purpose of cleaning that chicken. Now you see how that got tick tick again? Same thing as before, a little bit of water stir that again and pay attention to that look how that chicken is really coming off that bone now but it's still kind of together at the same time it's just real tender that's gonna be so easy to peel off and eat this is the end consistency you want for your gumbo 
and you do it by testing with the spoon. You dip that and you turn it over and you see how it's sticking just a little bit. That's exactly how you want it. So once you do that, it's time to manche. Join us next time on the Bon Ton Cooking Show where we have a New Year's special with Ash the Cajun Nerd. I'm gonna be cooking a, a ham and some black eyed peas. And me, I'm gonna be doing the smothered cabbage with pickled Cajun sausage. It's one of my favorites for the holidays. You're gonna be in my house, so I can't wait to have you. Until then, Pa Ran loves you. It's so hard. It's so hard to stop.